hello so this is a masquerade here and this is another video that I'm making and this one is about the book exterminate the brutes by Sven Lindquist so let's go in the class so in this video I will be giving a book review of this book that I read for a course of mine which is going to cover the book in its entirety and also explain the relevance of this book both historically culturally and its relevance in today's day and age even though this book was written a long time ago so without further ado let's get started this book basically aims to show us how the crimes in nazi germany especially the genocidal extermination was not a unique historical event it was shaped over a long history of European colonialism. I will now add a lot of excerpts from this book because they show a long chain of events that lead to the concentration camps and how uh, this is something that Pierre Bourdieu also wrote in his work of Habitus that the past influenced the present and it is always true in the case of history. So uh, let's go in and dive headfirst into the book itself. Each of these genocides had, of course, its own unique characteristics. However, two events need not be identical for one of them to facilitate the other. European world expansion accompanied as it was by a shameless defense of extermination created habits of thought and political precedents that made way for new outrages finally culminating in the most horrendous of them all, the Holocaust. So as we go through this book, the author Sven Lindquist is traveling through the deserts and he's writing this book while imagining what went down throughout history by, by researching multiple historical narratives from that event through diaries, through newspapers, etc, etc. And one sentence radiates from his screen, exterminate all the brutes. The Latin extermino means drive over the border, terminus exile, banish, exclude. Hence the English exterminate, which means drive over the border to death, banish from life. He also writes that because he's Swedish, he writes that Swedish has no direct equivalent to this kind of language. So the core concept and question of this book is, is the Nazi extermination of the Jews unique or not? The German historian Ernst Nolt has called the so-called extermination of the Jews by the Third Reich a reaction or a distorted copy and not an original action. The original was, according to Nolt, the extermination of the Kulaks in the Soviet Union and Stalin's purges in the 1930s, they were what Hitler copied. The idea that the extermination of the Kulaks caused the extermination of the Jews seems to have been abandoned, and many people emphasize that all historical events are unique and not copies of each other, but they can be compared. Thus, both likenesses and differences arise between the extermination of the Jews and other mass murders, from the massacre of the Armenians at the beginning of the 1900s to the more recent atro atrocities of Pol Pot. But in this debate, no one mentions the German extermination of the Herero people during Hitler's childhood. No one mentions the corresponding genocide by the French, the British, or the Americans. No one points out that during Hitler's childhood, a major element in the European view of mankind was the conviction that inferior races were by nature condemned to extinction. The truth, the true compassion of the superior race says, consisted in helping them on the way. Th this can also be explained by white man's burden and the need for the quote-unquote civilized world to go out and help the inferior races. It is these ideas that shaped the ideas which were politicized and carried out in forms of genocide. Another quote from the book is that morality, love, friendship, all such things are lacking in the savage, said Pagels. The savage respects nothing but brute strength. 
he regards fr- friendliness as stupidity so one should never show a savage any friendship over here they're talking about the uh, natives in uh, africa that were being colonized in the uh, 16 to 1700s by the british and this is the way they were being treated they were being referred to as savages and any sort of humanity was seen as stupidity to be extended to them and it is through these kind of rhetorics these kind of ideas which become strengthened over time which result in extremities such as the holocaust during the in the book the author not only talks about historical events they uh, in one chapter they talk about the whip which was made by the, uh, the hide of animals to in, inflict a lot of torture and from that the author talks about the use of the birchwood tree which the the author's parents use for punishment and this line was very po- profound where he the author talks about his own punishment right after talking about the punishment that other people faced i did not i did know for certain only that people are seized with a kind of madness when they take to violence the violence carries them and it's very profound to add this in this book because it shows how as orwell said with absolute power uh, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely and we see this we see this where when governments and hegemonies which have absolute power and no checks and balances no accountability and no sort of no sort of uh, accountability or answering to to anything and we see this power being abused multiple times throughout history the violence carries them along transforms them and makes them even afterward when it's all over unrecognizable whether it's parents governments parties policies they do become unrecognizable when they are seized with madness when they're carrying out violence oh if only the civilized world knew the way hundreds even thousands are murdered villages destroyed and surviving natives have to drag their lives along in the worst slavery these are from the accounts of people who saw how villages were being trampled all in the name of modernity civilization expansion capitalism conrad's two rogues had acquired their ivory through the slave trade who will talk if we hold our tongues there is nobody here no that was the root of the trouble says the narrator there was nobody there and being left alone with their own weakness men can get up to anything again this talks about the theme of lack of accountability and transparency the people who were given an anonymity and absolute power used it to the absolute worst they were left alone with their own weakness and they did indeed get up to anything and th- this was a line which really irked me which talked about the europeans uh, expansion which was the civilizing influences of commercial enterprise which is a distorted way of phrasing systemic violence and oppression which spread through a, uh, throughout the areas which were colonized from africa to india to all the other colonies too many europeans in- interpreted military superiority interpreted military superiority as intellectual and even biological superiority over here we have these linkages from the european uh, colonialism to the nazi germany time where an advancement in military superiority was deemed as intellectual and even biological superiority and over here when we talk about war crimes and how morality is shaped differently through war we see that there are certain weapons which are deemed not allowed in certain areas but allowed when they are being targeted to colonies the lead core of the dum dum bullet explodes the casing causing large painful wounds that do not heal well the use of dum dum bullets between civilized states was prohibited they were reserved for big game hunting and colonial wars so over here you read that the dum dum bullet which was a sort of a bullet which used to explode which used to cause a lot of painful wounds and because of that 
it was banned in civilized states civilized being the word with great importance here because if it's a civilized state uh, europe at that time you weren't allowed to use this weapon and where was it reserved for big game hunting and colonial wars where the victims to these weapons they were savages or people who weren't civilized enough for europe at the time and this sets the dangerous precedent which we see repeated throughout more of the genocides that are soon to follow historically let's talk about uh, evolution and talk about darwin who spoke of the savage races without clearly stating which he meant wallace and several other authors wrote the lower or even the lower and more depraved races leaving the reader in profound uncertainty was it what we in our day call the fourth world they were talking about or was it the entire third world or even more imperialist expansion gave the nazis the practical opportunity and economic reasons to exterminate the jews the extermination project's theoretical framework the lebensraum theory is part of imperialist tradition to the same tradition belongs the historical model of extermination of jews genocide in the colonies be it the indian colonies or the african colonies wherever the genocide from there greatly inspired and shaped how the genocide happened in nazi germany and the biggest example was auschwitz which was the modern industrial application of a policy of extermination on which european world domination had long since rested and over here we over here we talk about something really important in the book and one of its core ideas which are one of the idea which is really important to be left with the reader after they are done with the book it is that it is not knowledge that is lacking the educated general public has always largely known what outrages have been committed a lot of people went to the colonies at that time and they wrote about it and they tried to make a lot of noise about all the violence that was being uh, undergone to the locals and the natives all the villages that were being burned the people who were being amputated people who were uh, women and children who were being sold as slaves these things were largely known to the masses and are being committed in the name but they were at that time being committed in the name of progress civilization socialism democracy and the market how old is this book and is it not relevant today in today's day and age where we hear words such as progress civilization socialism democracy and the market where the same ideas still thrive and it is behind these ideas or these ideologies that a lot of systemic violence goes ignored despite knowing what outrages are committed this book is as relevant as it was the day it was written as it is today in 2020 uh now i'm going to move to a location where the book was written basically the book was mostly written in desert areas so i'm actually going to try to go to an area over there and just to capture the ambience and the feel of the book the writer travels through deserts writing about this book and as we said here in the same sort of ambience where the writer was writing and talking about let's talk about the lasting themes of this book as i conclude this uh, book review it was it it was that it is in the lack of knowledge even today if we are talking about today's in today's day and age we have a wealth of information at our disposal whether it be from the internet from different sources we don't have a lack of knowledge we have a lack of understanding and actually in acting upon the knowledge that we have that is the current issue of today's day and age according to this book especially the educated people knew what was going on we need to be very critical about our ideas of progress civilization socialism democracy and the market it is important to learn these lessons as even today politics policies are used to divide turn races religions against one another to get to power it's crucial for us to learn from history so that we will not be doomed to repeat it where even today where, where you have people who use these kind of divisive lines and politics whether they are run on the basis of race or class or religions 
in order to turn these people against one another and using this power for political advantage we see this happening globally right now and we need to be critical about this as as human beings we need to be critical about this because it is a very distorted history that we ignore we, we ignore the ghosts of the past when we keep ignoring how these people keep getting into power over and over again to conclude this presentation i have the final words from the book you already know that so do i it is not knowledge we lack what is missing is the courage to understand what we know and draw conclusions thank you